All right, what's up my friends and welcome to another episode of the OCD and Anxiety Show. My name is Matt Cotty and I'm a licensed clinical social worker and the creator of the AAA Response. So in this episode, I wanna talk about how exposure and response prevention can literally rewire the brain. And so let me kind of clarify what I mean by that. So when we do exposure and response prevention, right? And this is really the kind of cornerstone gold standard um, methodology, if you will, or, or treatment modality for the spectrum of anxiety or stress related disorders, right? So when we're talking about anxiety, we're talking about futuristic fears, right? And, um, you know, our body is setting off the stress response and there's nothing actually happening in the present. So we're, we're experiencing these extreme high levels of stress and there's nothing to do because the thing we're afraid of isn't actually happening. Right. When the stress response is designed to put us in action right now for threats that are currently happening right now. And, you know, uh, the, the problem with anxiety is that there's endless amounts of possibilities that could happen in our future. So if we're always stressing about something that could happen, we can literally spend our entire lives in a state of stress while simultaneously being completely safe. And so when it comes to phobias, when it comes to OCD, when it comes to panic um, and panic disorder, or general anxiety, um, <clears throat> or, or even PTSD, right? Exposure and response prevention is a tool, and that, that we can use to essentially challenge what our, you know, the, the stress response going off in our body. So how, um, and, and the reason this is so effective, and, and really, it's it's an absolute necessity, in my opinion, as part of the treatment modality. It's not the only tool that we should use, but it it needs to happen because. What, what's happening with, with anxiety is, again, we are perceiving that we're in danger when we're really not, okay? So what, what this allows us to do is actually change our belief structures and our perception, right? That's really what uh, exposure and response prevention is about. It's about changing a perception. And because if, if let's say that I have a contamination fear, right? Let's just use that as an example. And I have a fear of touching doorknobs. Well, doorknobs by and large aren't dangerous but but i've seen plenty of people right who will touch a doorknob and literally go into that fight or flight so the process of exposure is to touch a doorknob or to touch a contaminated object in this particular instance and then prevent yourself from responding with a behavior that would immediately alleviate your fears right so so in this case prevent yourself from washing or you know doing mental behaviors like rumination analyzing um, trying to reassure yourself or avoid interchecking and all that other stuff. And I know there's a lot to that. And I have a free guide um, you know, that can kind of outline this process a little more in depth for you. I put it in the links uh, in the notes um, so it, it can it just kind of help you understand the high level concept of exposure. Um, but anyways, when it comes to what exposure really does for us, okay, so if we are able to stand in the face of, of something we're afraid of, and actually challenge to see if something really happens what what happens is our brains forced to in this situation to say is, is this actually dangerous and should i keep setting off the stress response in the future so let's use the example of of flying right if someone's afraid of flying and they avoid planes well every time they avoid a plane they reinforce the idea that flying is dangerous right so the exposure would be actually getting on a plane right and the plane would take off and it would land. And the moment that it lands, that person's brain, if they didn't do any compulsions, is forced into the situation to challenge, like, was that actually dangerous? Like, I am I was afraid, the plane took off, it landed, and now I'm safe. And by forcing the brain into that position, the brain's then forced to question, like, hey, you know, should I actually set off this stress response about this particular event? Because we can be afraid of things that aren't actually dangerous. Right. In fact, that's most of our fears. Right. If, if nothing's actually happening, there's no real reason to be in the stress response. You know, many people are afraid of losing their house one day. Right. Or losing money. Right. It's not actually happening, but they, they live in this state of fear over that. Right. So when it comes to exposure and response prevention, what we're doing is we're essentially reprogramming the stress response by by repetitive exposure to an event so it challenges our our subconscious right because our stress response is, is in the subconscious right we don't actively tell our brain to set off the, the fight or flight response it does it subconsciously and it does it based on our perception and beliefs 
So when we're able to actually stand in the face of fear and not do any behaviors to reinforce it, it forces the reprogramming of the stress response not to go off in that situation because our brain doesn't want to use energy if it doesn't have to, right? Also, it, it challenges our beliefs and perceptions about that event. Okay, so <clears throat> when we're doing exposure or stress prevention, I want to be clear that we're not, we're not putting that there's no one that ever gets hurt during exposure and response prevention. We don't do actually dangerous things, right? We're, we're challenging perceptions that, that a person has, or that, you know, that we have as individuals about an event that, you know, most people really don't hold, right? So most people don't have a problem opening doorknobs, for instance, you know, getting on planes, right? Most people can do these activities. So, and, and what happens is usually the fear gets to the point where it becomes very limiting for the person to continue living like that. So that's why we do exposure and response prevention. And through the process of neuroplasticity, the brain begins to create new circuitry, right? And, and this is what the most, like the most fascinating and hopeful um, information that I ever learned on my journey to recovery was this idea of neuroplasticity, the idea that your brain can literally rewire right through Hebb's law and the quantum Zeno effect. And, you know, it doesn't matter. Jeffrey Schwartz, Dr. Jeffrey Schwartz has a great book and Dr. Rebecca Gladding called you are not your brain. And they explain neuroplasticity really well in that book. And I'm sure there's many other resources on that um, as well. But when you, um, when you, through the process of repetitive exposure, you're able to create new circuitry and new connections and new, new, new wire wiring in the brain. And, that is what ultimately allows the healing over time so that people can actually kind of recategorize fears in your mind. And you, you've probably seen this in your life. There's probably been things that you've been afraid of in the past that you aren't afraid of anymore. Like you, and, and this is how exposure works, right? So people will always ask, well, am I going to have these thoughts forever? Right. Am I going to, am I going to have this question in my mind forever? Um, and the, the thought is, the belief is, is that I'm always going to have this emotional response to this question or this thought or this idea or this image that bothers me. Through exposure, what we do is we essentially separate the emotional reaction that's happening and we calm the emotional response down. And the question or thought becomes recategorized in your brain as just another thought and question. It, the, the best way I can explain exposure to someone of how, it, how it's going to look at the end is think of a fear you used to have and have that thought in your mind right now and watch as you just have no reaction to it, right? Whether it's what if a monster's under my bed or, you know, it might be a, a thing you used to worry about when you were 12 and you can have that thought and essentially coexist with that thought and there's no emotional charge with it. Through the process of exposure, we can take the thought and fear that you currently have and actually achieve that same emotional reactive state where there's just a, a habituated state, right? Meaning like there's, there's an indifference to it. There's an ambivalence. It's, it's just kind of, eh, yeah, that's a thought, right? And, and that's the power of exposure and response prevention. Now, now the thing that most people do incorrectly with exposure is that they, they think they're doing exposure, but they end up engaging in several different safety behaviors or compulsions that without realizing it. And that's, that's really where the AAA response comes into play is that most of the behaviors we actually do are, are right in our head. So you see, most people can see the physical behaviors they do, right? The washing of the hands, the avoidance, the getting reassurance, the reading the same article again and again, because right? you physically do these things. Most people don't realize is that a lot of the behaviors are just right here in the mind. Things like analyzing, worrying, ruminating, right? Um, silently praying, counting, distracting, mentally reassuring, mentally checking, body scanning, you know, all this stuff we, we can do just right in our mind. These behaviors actually serve the same reinforcement that avoidance or washing or, or a lot of the physical behaviors that, that we do. So to do true exposure and response prevention, there has to be a complete elimination of the compulsions and safety behaviors. That is the thing that I really want to stress in today's episode, that the only way that we can really achieve, <coughs> excuse me, the only way we really can achieve 
the rewiring and restructuring through Hebb's law and neuroplasticity is the complete elimination of the behaviors and the consistent exposure, right? It's not doing one spo exposure to a, a situation that's enough. The consistency of it and the complete elimination of the, um, of the behaviors is how you are successful with exposure response prevention. That's how you successfully rewire the brain and challenge old beliefs, right? So to continue on from, uh, you know, the last episode that I did where I talked about, you know, changing beliefs, well, beliefs drive our behaviors, right? The way that we actually challenge and change beliefs is, is through changing our behaviors first to prove that our new belief is true, okay? So a lot of people, like, let's just say the fear of flying, let's just use that as an example. If we have a fear of flying, then like, oh my gosh, like, I'm afraid that plane's going to crash. And that's the story that we're operating from. The only way we can ever challenge that belief is not saying that I believe the plane's safe and then getting on, is we have to get on, let the plane fly and land. And that is what allows us to subconsciously challenge our beliefs and reprogram our stress response. So that's really the power of exposure and response prevention. And I wanted to take the time to explain that today because a lot of people, you know, they, they read about exposure and they just already, you know, they already just, just get overwhelmed at, at like the idea of exposure and they kind of give up before they ever even really try it or they try it and engage in behaviors without knowing it, which then makes them believe that exposure doesn't work. Or a lot of people have beliefs and stories about exposure and response prevention. This doesn't work for me. Yeah, Matt, that's great. But, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, you know, it doesn't work for me or, or, you know, I tried it and it didn't work. The reality is exposure is not one of these things that works for some people and doesn't work for some other people. It works when you do it without doing any behaviors because you have the same stress response in your body that I do and neuroplasticity, right? Hebb's law, a law applies to everyone. It's like the law of gravity. It doesn't just like pick and choose it's it's ones that it works for right like the stuff that we're talking about here is is universal right with habituation the the key is understanding that many of the behaviors are mental and by doing it consistently is what allows us to be successful it's not a random one-off exposure that's going to get you better it's it's the consistency of it that's going to cause the reprogramming and rewiring to happen and um, you know, we obviously walk you through this and, and go in depth in this into in our taking back control program and, and a great first place to start if you've never gone into this or want to learn more about this is the guide that we have in the links for you. Um, you know, and, and, and again, it's, it's hard work. I mean, I do want to acknowledge that. But I mean, it's some of the most beautiful and transformative work you can do. Because like I was saying, in the last episode, when you live in a story in a story of of fear and you live with beliefs that drive fear and drive and and you live in behaviors that are driven out of fear most of us believe that we are living free that we're living that, that, that we're living life on our terms and i thought that for a long time and and so this is not a judgment statement at all to those listening and watching but one of the things that was a real wake up for me was when what what you begin to really notice about fear is when you can't do something because you're afraid that's that's a true realization of the prison of fear when you really won't do something that you want to do when you won't go on a trip because you're afraid when you won't go out to that restaurant with your friends whatever it is right and, and that's what fear really is, in my, in my opinion. It, it's, a, it's a prison. It, it creates a prison for us. And we live in it. And, and some of us convince ourselves that we like living there. And, but when you, when you decide to get really honest with yourself and say, hey, you know, I don't, I don't want this to control me anymore. I want to live a life that's, that's untethered. Un, 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 I, got, I don't want to be held down by fear, right? I don't want to be restricted in any way that's when the 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 discomfort of exposure is worth going through because you understand the value of freedom on the other side of it and you can't make someone do this you can't tell someone to do this it has to be something that you decide you need to do for yourself 
but the growth of it when you when you really get to see the other side and i've watched so many people and got to be part of so many people's journeys on the other side of fear and it's one of the reasons i love doing what i do the liberation you experience is, is you know you can't put a money value on it you can't put an emotional value on it i mean it, it's like it's, it's 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 a different world and so if if this is something that is new to you right i'm so happy you're here uh with us um and and if you think and if you've tried this in the past and you haven't been successful chances are you just haven't been guided correctly on how to apply this and there, there's a lot of people that are well intended that give a lot of misinformation on this and and um and incorrect information out there so you know with um with the show you know the, the whole point is is to get the get tools out there that are gonna that are gonna change uh people's lives and and really give them and empower them to change their own life right because that's the thing with exposure response prevention and and with ocd and anxiety recovery is you truly are your own healer you know yeah you 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 are the one who does the work you're the only one that can do the work um, and I and I tell people this all the time. And, and the great thing about being your own healer is that once you learn the skills, you have them forever. And, and you can apply it to any fear that you encounter. And once you really begin to move against fear in your life, and the more and more you move against fear in your life, the great thing is, is the more empowered you become and the more you decide that like living in fear, you, you start to see the value of not living in fear. And, and the growth that comes internally is um, is is one of the the best things about exposure and response prevention. Yes, like the healing and the the rewiring and the restructuring of, of the brain and, and the stress response and neuroplasticity, all that stuff is amazing. But I think it's who you become through the process that's the real the real gold underneath the surface, if you will, where that, that most people don't realize it's who you who you become. As a, as a person by facing fear. So I just wanted to talk about that today, um, you know, and, and again, just encourage you if, if this is something that you're struggling with or you're applying, um, you know, to, to really take those next steps this year, right? That's one thing with exposure I was really good at, and I know so many people are good at, is putting it off. You know, I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, you know, the, I don't have time today, right? Um, but the reality is, is that there, there is no better time than right now. There will never be a better day to, than today to face your fear. And if if you're struggling with this, again, at, over at Restored Minds, we have support for you in so many different levels, whether it's our guide or our, you know, our Taking Back Control program, as well as our, you know, our live groups that we run and coaching programs. And I mean, I mean, there's just, there's support at every level, whatever it is you need. So, um, so, you know, please, you know, check us out over at Restored Minds. We have links right down below to get you started. And uh, and just thank you for taking the time to be with us on this episode today. We're so excited that you're here. And if you could help us out, please, um, by liking and subscribing and sharing and even leaving us a review on iTunes. Uh, it just helps us to, to really, um, you know, get better rankings on the show, as well as getting this information out and getting it shared to people that need it. So um, if you found this helpful, please support us and, and help us out by doing that just so we can help get this to as many people as we can. So wish you guys a great week as always. Um, thank you for, for being with us. And um, yeah, and I hope that you'll consider um, being part of our community with Taking Back Control and really challenging your fears and taking back control of your own life. So thank you. Great. Have a great week and I'll see you guys soon.